it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, on September the 27th, 2004, we found it necessary to post the following um, notice on the web page. I'm going to read it to you. At this time, we must with great sorrow confirm that Dr. John Mack has passed away in London, England. Dr. Mack was one of several speakers discussing British officer T.E. Lawrence, uh, the man that Lawrence of Arabia was uh, based on, at the T.E. Lawrence Society Symposium in Oxford on Sunday. Dr. Mack's one, uh, excuse me, 1977 biography of Lawrence a prince of our disorder received the Pulitzer Prize in biography. Dr. Mack's presentation at the afternoon panel was so warmly received that he was asked uh, to stay and present an additional evening talk, which again was met with positive response. On Monday, now they were one day ahead of us in England, he spent time in London and went to dinner with his friends. On his return to the home at which he was staying while in London, traveling on foot at Tartan Ridge Road, he was struck by a vehicle being driven by an intoxicated driver. Dr. Mack was on a crosswalk. <coughs> Dr. Mack was pronounced dead on the scene by London police, and it is believed that he has died on impact. Myself and many of our friends had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Mack. My encounter with the courageous and gentle man was just after the 2003 UFO conference in Laughlin, Nevada, and I had Justin Wright with me. I was outside the airport and had thrown some pennies on the ground so I wouldn't beep going to security. And a man I recognized as Dr. Mack stopped and picked him up, and I asked him if he was superstitious. And he replied, I know who you are. You're the woman that wrote that ghastly book. He then invited me to accompany him on a trip to Las Vegas to stay at the Luxury Casino. I don't know if I said that right. I was on my way back to Olympia and so decided uh, and so declined the invitation. I have often wondered what would have transpired if I had taken him up on this invitation. In 2002, Dr. Mack did a presentation at the annual meeting at the Society of Scientific Exploration on, on abnormal list properties of meteorite fragments. Um, and they were called Moldovite. He presented the results of a study he did on the stones, uh, usual effect and habit of disappearing and reappearing at our times and our places. The question, the question is whether or not his death was indeed accidental. Dr. Mack had in-depth knowledge about the alien abduction phenomenon, knowledge that the powers uh, that be have worked so hard to suppress. Now, after we posted that, of course, word got around really quick that that had happened. And um, just oddly enough, all of our computers crashed almost simultaneously. Um, I called some of the local news stations, excuse me, <coughs> to see if they m might be able to um, talk about, you know, at least acknowledge that he died. And I was told uh, by Fox, uh, all the channels, that, oh, yeah, it was on the national news, but because of Mount St. Helen, it was noteworthy to talk about it. And I pointed out to them that he had very many local ties to Washington State and all around the world. Millions of people uh, loved Dr. Mack. And so we thought we'd take this time and dedicate a show to him. And it's called In Charge of the World. And what that entails, the first clip is many of his friends from all around the world giving their opinion uh, in their, what would happen if they was in charge of the world. And then the second clip are people that I met all through the country. And I thought that just maybe he would appreciate it, our effort to uh, do that. In between clips, I'll read you some more things, but one of his favorite um, sayings was, the alien encounter experience seems almost like an outreach program for the cosmos to the spiritually impaired. So we can probably go to that clip and see what some of his friends thought they would be able to do if um, he was in charge of the world.
So that's for Dr. Mack. Maybe not. What are you going to do? Here we go. Probably try and get everybody to uh, work together versus just fighting. You know, you, you can have a small scale of just the UFO community. You see different mm -hmm. sides of it arguing. Go to the United States, you've got the different political parties mm -hmm. arguing. Do a global scale, you've got countries arguing. So mm -hmm. it's just human nature, I guess, you know, and, and you would want to stop that if you were in charge of the world. But honestly, you know, I think it's probably an impossible task. Mm -hmm. I don't think it can ever stop. You want to be on a time factor here really quick? Um, I'm going to put you in charge of the world One in one minute. Tell me what you're going to do in one minute, and then we can go safe go if you want to. If not, we don't. But you're in charge of the world. One minute. Go. Okay. I'm in charge of the world. Yes. First thing I would do is I would restore our ancient right to judge the law and judge the government through juries. When the ordinary people are called to jury duty, they should be informed of their power to judge both law and fact, and to judge the ultimate question, whether justice is being done. It's fine for the judge to give them instructions, like uh, guide, roadmap guides, give them directions, but they should also be told they don't have to follow that. They can follow their own conscience. If everyone everywhere would begin following their conscience, this would be a better world, and you have the most power at any given moment that you're ever going to have when you sit on the jury. You can actually stop the government, you can free somebody, you can convict somebody, and it's, you know, one jury may or may not bring down a bad law like the Patriot Act, but if hundreds or thousands of juries begin saying no to these things, that does stop a bad act or a bad law. So that's the first thing. And the second thing I would do is I would basically throw open the government's archives about UFOs and free energy and anti-gravity and all of the research that the American taxpayer has paid for and we're not allowed to know about. You know, a hundred years after Henry Ford, we're still driving the horseless carriage. Yeah. Isn't there something wrong with that? I mean, look how computers have gone in just a short time from nothing to everywhere and controlling everything practically with computers, and they make these advances all the time in them. But yet, the, something much more important, our energy systems are basically the same things we were using a hundred years ago. That's, you know, if you could have free energy for your home and not have to use up the world's oil resources and not have to kill people, you know, blood for oil, that would be far more important to have free energy for your home straight from the universe or from wind power or some kind of Tesla technology than it would be just to have another computer that can whiz through the internet faster. See, I'm not saying computers have no, no uses, but on a scale of, of what do we really need, we need the free energy, we need the advanced technology, the alien technology more. Now, computers may in fact be a spin-off of alien technology. The, the integrated circuits and things like that may have come from Roswell in 1947. But there's yeah. other alien technologies we should be using that are more important. So your minute in being in charge is up. I'm world, what are you going to do? Oh, thank you very much. If I was in charge of the world, uh, despite the fact that I'm a Capricorn and a workaholic, uh, and always in positions of responsibility and authority, I don't quite know. Uh, I would promote peace, obviously. I would uh, suggest laying down our arms and going to the peace tables to bring harmony to all of us and peace and prosperity to all of us and also to uh, uh, bring about uh, zero point energy so we don't have to rely on fossil fuel uh, to promote Dr. Stephen Greer who's uh, involved with the Disclosure Project, a big partner who heads up the Disclosure Project. So if I was to be um, if that hypothetical a world leader, I would promote those uh, things I just enunciated. In charge of the world. For one minute. The world. Go. I know everybody would say, oh, let's have world peace, but that's not it. We're here to learn lessons. I think we're doing what we need to be doing, each of us, and we each have a responsibility, and we're doing what we can. Uh -huh. Would I change anything? I would, if I could give a gift to everyone, it would be a small awareness, as much as they could handle at that moment, and just a little bit more. And then maybe we would all look at each other just a little bit differently. But I do have an understanding that whatever path we're on, whatever point in our development that we're at is where we need to be. Cool. For one minute, um, go. Okay. Well, I'm in charge of the world for a minute. Um, I think... If I had one minute, what am I going to do to 
to awaken mass consciousness as much as I can. What one thing could I do? Hmm. You could, uh, you could declassify the UFO documents and people will sort of wake up and realize uh, what's going on here. I think you'd have a, a consciousness shift that would be uh, less egocentric, I suppose, and more expanded, which might lead to the adoption of uh, the embracement of uh, alternative energy technologies, um, uh, probably a, a greater world peace as we realize our uh, common human ancestry, um, and so on down the line. Um, I think that one thing might be a very productive, very beneficial thing to do. Um, not easy, huh? Not. See, you are in of the world for one minute. What would you do? Quisiera saludar a todos los oyentes. Eh, yo creo que nuestra causa es una causa muy santa y muy grandiosa. Es decir, para, eh, para que salvar a la humanidad de un eh, caso, eh, por ejemplo, eh, 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 situaciones apuradas, eh, asoladas en este momento, a una plataforma más arriba. Eh, es decir, eh, Mediante nuestros esfuerzos deberíamos lograr éxitos en elevar la, eh, la, la, eh, la civilización humana. Entonces yo estoy muy eh, en favor de eso. Yo creo que algún día nosotros podríamos eh, realizar este sueño de ayudar a todo el mundo para crear un nuevo mundo como un, un, general, un militar norteamericano retirado que es, es eh, experto en eh, los casos de Rosberg Forso me dijo que me elogia que creo que es inmersivo dijo que eh, yo estoy seguro que persona como usted es una persona que puede ayudarnos a todos a crear un nuevo mundo. Creo que una persona no es posible hacer eso. Entonces, eh, tengo que, eh, uniendo a todos mis colegas, hacemos una gran obra. Uh, first, he would like to greet everyone who is watching, um, and he feels that the task that he's been assigned in his life is a very sacred and grand task um, that uh, one person cannot do it all. Although, when he spoke to Philip Corso the day after Roswell, uh, he, Corso told him that he was a person who could change the world and make a new world, but he believes that it's all of us working together. Uh, he and his colleagues, as well as the rest of us who are watching, who have the opportunity to to um, tell the truth, to create a new world, to rise above the petty differences that we have uh, occupied ourselves with on this planet and work towards the betterment of our entire civilization and the, the evolution of our, of our planet and our species. Almost everybody I interviewed, uh, I'm going to put you in charge of the world for one minute. <laughs> you are in charge, so go. <laughs> oh, my God, what a question. If I were in charge of the world, I would have to be very intelligent, very powerful, 
very caring. Uh, I would have to be the image of God himself. But How can I be that? Not would. You are. I, I just made you in charge of the world. <laughs> so, so it's all up to you. <laughs> oh. I don't Somebody's got think, to do it. <laughs> I don't think there is any word or any words that I could put into anyone's mind that would help them. I think it's each one of us individually is in charge of the world, and each one of us is a part of the whole. We are a part of the whole fabric of this universe. We only appear to be separate. We feel we are separate, but we aren't, and we feel we're disempowered. So if I were given that question, I would have to join my consciousness with everyone around the world and know that I was a part of the whole, and then perhaps I could give an answer that would satisfy. What are you going to do? Well, let's see. In charge of the world, I suppose that what I would like to do is to get people, earthlings, first of all, to start thinking of themselves as earthlings, earthlings. instead of Canadian, American, Chinese, Greek, whatever. Secondly, I'll try to get them to see how we must look to others. I think from an alien viewpoint, we're a primitive society whose major activity is tribal warfare. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a track record we have. Uh, every single day, more than 30,000 children die on this planet of needless disease or starvation. And yet, the world today is spending roughly a trillion dollars on things military. Mm -hmm. That would feed all those kids and then some. So we've got our priorities askew. I think we need to recognize we're not the big shots in the neighborhood. That's tough for any government to buy into, mm -hmm. but we're not. And frankly, I think the aliens are here to quarantine us. If you were an alien, would you want Earthlings out there? Primitive society, major activity is tribal warfare. Look around. I don't think we qualify for admission to a cosmic kindergarten. On a bad day, I'd say a cosmic preschool. So I think I want to get people to look around, to recognize that we have a beautiful planet, that we're going to hell in a handbasket and how we treat it, mm -hmm. and that we have not put the welfare of the people here first. And because of that, there are all kinds of petty dictators who have taken advantage of their people, slaughtered other people, and gotten away with it because nobody stands in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, we need to revolutionize our thinking. That's what's needed. And the world may not be ready for that, I don't know. But, you know, desegregation in the South was done in a systematic way. First grade, next year first two grades, next year first three grades, etc. And the thing that made the difference as to whether there were troubles or not were the attitudes of the leaders. Mm -hmm. When the police chief said, we have law-abiding people here, we don't like these new laws, but I'm sure our people will abide by them. You know what? The people did. Yeah. If you had a mayor or a police chief who said, our people will never put up with this, mm -hmm. that's when you had riots and trouble and difficult. Now, I worked on a number of government-sponsored advanced research and development programs and the big missing ingredient was leadership. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, this is where we want to go. This is how we're going to get there. If you don't want to do that, get off the train. And so what's needed, for example, NASA. Now, I've been a strong proponent of the space program. I worked on different space projects. But you realize that since Kennedy said, let's get the moon to the moon, a man to the moon and back safely by the end of the decade, NASA hasn't had any goals. They're thinking about considering the possibility of perhaps reviewing the thoughts about maybe going to Mars. That's not a goal. But they, their goal is to keep their budget coming in. Yeah. What we need is people who have goals. The vision thing, as first George Bush said in a negative sort of way, but I think we need that. So I think the world is in a real need for standing back, looking at us, and recognizing that we have the wherewithal to change the world. Mm -hmm. But spending all that money on things military isn't the way to do it. <coughs> and 
I, I'm very concerned. Frankly, when I was a lot younger, I thought my kids would grow up in a much better world than I had grown up. Yeah, I, I remember so, the actually. war, you know, yeah, and stuff like that. And yet I look around and I say, the world isn't a better place now than it was then. Oh, we have more toys and more baubles. Yeah. But in terms of security for mankind for the future, I don't see it. Oh. Pardon? You know, um, these were some of his friends. Now I'm going to read you a real short passage here from, uh, we made reference to Stephen Greer and Stephen Bassett. And this is a, an email that we pulled off the computer before we crashed. And uh, Stephen Bassett emailed and said, uh, Mac was one of the great men and women of the 20th century. The national institutions do not, do not yet know this, and people don't, but they will know in good time. His contribution to the world which extended well beyond experience uh, research, will, re will be recounted over the coming weeks. His legacy can be most readily reviewed uh, at centerchange.org. Then he gives a little passage here when he met John Mack. <coughs> it was very important to him. His courage and brilliance led me to do this work. He was in good health with the years um, of vital contributions ahead. He was the most accomplished and recognized um, person in, in the world willing to speak to and examine the most controversial issues of his time. He's irreplaceable and yet we, he, he must be replaced. Some of the stature within the... Uh, I can't see that. Oh, gee. Excuse me. Someone of stature within the academic community must come forward and take his place and his legacy. And um, so he just uh, touched so many people in so many different capacities. Now we're going to go to the people that I met on the road where we asked them the same question, you're in charge of the world. We're going to go right down the line and get back to um, Dr. John Mack here in a little while. So once we can queue up, we will do that and then give you a little more background on him, on the works of this great man, including some of the books that he wrote. So whenever we're ready, we'll go there. What am I going to do? There you go. Um, first declare world peace, and next make sure everybody has enough food, next make sure everybody has enough medicine, and then do what I want. Cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to do uh, like, I don't know. You don't know. I just put you in charge of the world. Yeah. I'll uh, probably make peace. Make peace? Yeah, because like if my dad was still in the army, he'd probably go to Iraq. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Uh huh. You, you get to make all. The, you get to make the decisions for the people of the planet Earth. What are you gonna do? Well, first I'm gonna put chocolate factories in every state. But <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I am going to. <laughs> Come on, there has to be more than chocolate factories. Um. <laughs> World uh, peace? Yes, we need world peace. But I want to be president. Uh, yeah. But I just put you okay. in charge of the world so you don't have to be, you're already okay. there. So now what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to mix up a bunch of people so they're all friends and then can all live happily ever after. No, well, that's good. Yeah. In charge of the world, what are you going to do? I was in charge of the world. No, you are. Oh, I am in charge of the world. Uh, kind of like the president or something like that? Or the world. The world. Wow. Um, let's see. Well, I'd try and make the world a little bit more peaceful place than all that. Um, I know there's always going to be conflicts. But, um, I don't know. I guess I just... You are in charge of the world for one minute on top of the world. In charge. In charge of the world. Heaven forbid. 
What are you going to do? Probably leave it alone. My world. What are you going to do? Charge of the world. What am I going to do? Well, my gut feeling was to say nothing, but, uh... <laughs> uh, what would I do? Charge the world. Why not? I... And this means humans? Well, the whole world. You mean animal, plant, everything? You in charge. You, you choose. Well, I would probably clean up the rivers. Mm-hmm. Uh... Ban a lot of chemicals that aren't necessary. Mm-hmm. Loud? Oh, ban a lot of chemicals that aren't necessary. Mm-hmm. Probably have to educate myself on a lot of things in that realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, charge of the world. I mean, how much power would I have? You are in charge of the world. Well, I would hope that people would smarten up a little bit about how to treat their fellow man. Mm-hmm. Uh, how to treat themselves. Mm-hmm. And being in charge, can't... That would be upon the presumption that my my wishes would be other people's wishes, and I don't know that that would happen. Mm hmm You know? Uh, I... You stumped me there. You should have... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's also a good one. Oh. What are you going to do? The first thing I'm going to do, since I am in charge of the world, is to stop the war. No more killing. Bring our troops home would be number one. And then pray that Nasara will come through to help each one, because that will be worldwide. And uh, to teach people, uh, we missed the boat on Jesus, I'm sorry. He taught love and understanding and compassion and caring and teach people that it doesn't matter what religion you are. It does not matter what you believe in. You believe in what comes from your heart. We have forgotten. We have forgotten how to be kind to our brothers and our sisters and to get back to that type of peace. Well, we, I had put you in charge of the world, and you very definitely stated that you are in charge of your, of your world. Now, again, you are in charge of the whole world. What are you going to do? The whole world? Huh? Talk loud. Oh, my gosh. The whole world. That's, mm -hmm. that's a big world. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, I never really thought of that. <laughs> and it's the first time that uh, that was ask that so I'm not really sure I get to maybe sit aside and think about it okay maybe in charge of the world what are you going to do whoops when I uh, go across the, the world you are in charge of the world that means people have to do what you say what are you going to tell them to do Uh, I would like to see a very much more peaceful between nations and nations and live and then live together, think about each other and then uh, live through a, through a better uh, peaceful life and within the countries across the nation. I'd like to see that when I'm still around here, I'd like to see them have a, a peaceful between nations and live happily after that. Well, good. World, what are you going to do? For sure, I would not be a president taking things and that away from people and all, but it's just hard to be a, a person that's taking over things that I don't want, I don't want to, don't want to really do, but um, 
Well, you're very humble. You weren't just talking about president, but I put you in charge of the world. In charge of the That's world. That's bigger than not. Well, I would have just said I would want to be God, but... No, we didn't say God. I would have wanted to be, though, like you mm -hmm. said, uh, in charge of the world. Mm -hmm. I wanna, don't want to be God. But I would just to change that, turn all the way around, that I wouldn't want to be in charge of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I can be big responsible for the whole world in my hand, you know. There's a lot of people in myself that me and my son, you know, son, my girlfriend's enough for me, not the whole world to take care mm -hmm. of. So, so maybe, so. Bruce, you are in charge of the world. What are you going to do? Well, I would give the, I would see that the, everybody is working in peace and harmony and collectively helping each other instead of uh, working against each other in, in various parts of the world. And to help and to help each other uh, support each other in whatever needs they have, whether or not it's education or uh, human services or uh, uh, food or uh, religious activities, uh, I would uh, see that they could. Uh, I would encourage them to uh, solve their problems that way and work and live in harmony. Okay, cool. Thank you. This is John. Now, John, you are in charge of the world. Yeah. What are you going to do? Try to do my best to make You have to talk loud. Try my best to make it better for, so we can survive in it. And we should try to focus on making our life better so we can be a part of it. And make it, make it so other people can, can enjoy the same right that we all have. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Laura. You're in charge of the world. And what would I do? What are you going to do? I'm going to promote peace, love, and joy. Joy. That's a good one. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Well, and just see what happens. Cool. Thanks. There's Miss Vivian. Miss Vivian? You are in charge of the world. What will you do? She can cut me out. No. Uh, oh, in charge of the world, what would I do? I would love to bring an enormous amount of opportunity for people to transform themselves. Cool. In a short moment. Thanks. This is Bob. Um, you've met him on one of the shows. Now, Bob, you are in charge of the world. What are you going to do? I'm going to take away all the rights to uh, working. And that type of way, people have more time to enjoy life. Oh, how cool. So you don't have to work anymore. Uh -huh. You just, we have just enjoyment. No working. And people that enjoy going out and gardening, can go out and garden to produce food for the rest of the world. And the people, the other people that enjoy singing can go out and sing to the rest of the world. And the people that enjoy painting and building can go out and enjoy that. So there's no more work, just enjoyment. How wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, this is Vicki. Vicki, you are in charge of the world. What are you going to do? Um, I don't know. It'll take a little bit of thought. <laughs> you really put me on the spot here. Well, that's good. That's the whole purpose <laughs> for the question. In charge of the world. Hmm. I hope that everybody has enough to eat and a place to sleep and... I think that would be good. Okay, thanks. Bob's going to amend his question. He's going to add something. Well, you know, I said things that make you happy, you get to do. So I'm going to put all the smokers and the drinkers of lattes and, and espressos all in one area so they can all enjoy it together. Togetherness is a real cause of happiness. Cool, thanks. Bernie, you are in charge of the world. What are you going to do? I'm going to make another one. Make another one? Make another one. 
Why? Because we've got to start from the beginning. Uh -oh. oh, okay. Why, why, why start at midstream? No, but it's um, I, what I would what I would um, do is for one day I would make everybody understand each other. Cool. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome. To the world for one minute. What will you do? Hmm, if I'm in charge of the world for one minute, what would I do? I think I would, I think I would go a little bit socialist and create a public health care system that was worldwide. It, it saddens me to see people who are in need of medical assistance and they can't get it for whatever reason there is, you know, or people who are relatively well-to-do and uh, they have an accident in life and they can never catch up with their medical bills or, or a child that happens to be born with a disability and their families can never recover from that. So I think that would be definitely one thing I did was you know, have a public health care system that just covered all. Um, we spend so many dollars on research of going to the moon or seeing the stars or, uh, you know, counting how many how many times people ride up and down elevators things that that seem useless even though I'm sure there are, are some uses for other people but not enough towards benefiting people as a whole so that would be one thing I did then I, then I think I would go back to the basic American Constitution you know the the authors seem to be on the right track but much like reading the bible i think the interpretations over the years have have made it become something that it wasn't ever meant to be if we just go back to the basic freedoms of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness across all nations i think we'd be better off i'm putting you in charge of the world and I'd like to know from you, what are you going to do? To be in charge of the world on a personal level would be a great task that I can only answer in the betterment of mankind. Meaning, not necessarily my generation, but future generations to help ease the pains that our earth experiences because right now the way man is living we are very um we're almost like a cancer that that lives on this earth just just constantly constantly using uh, the resources that the earth provides without trying to replenish um, the resources that we take for granted um, because what I believe is, yes, the Earth itself is a living, breathing organism. And the resources that we use, whether it be fossil fuels, the trees, the water, um, these are gifts from a higher power to help us sustain and, and live a good life. But the things in society, I mean, mankind has been... Um, it, in, in its way, it's its own destruction over the centuries because uh, of utilizing these resources. They were not taught how to exactly replenish the stuff they used. And I, I honestly worry for my, my daughters and, and my grandchildren in the future. Will they have these resources available to them? And the way the world's going right now, um, I don't see it happening. I would say within the next two, three hundred years, it, we're going to be completely um, devastated. If not, we, we should start applying um, and try try to seek knowledge to help us, us heal the earth right now. Because, I mean, she's in pain right now. She's hurting. And we're not listening to her warning signs. You know, the, 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 the heat from the sun her, her, her skin protection is, is, is getting thin, and she's burning, you know, I mean, even right now the seasons are off, we've, we've, we've offset 
her her inner clock, her, her her workings, and the way it is. I mean, even right now, the seasons. We're about three months off on our seasons. You know, when when winter should be winter, it's usually uh, fall. So, um, and I would have to honestly say that um, mankind is responsible for that, um, altering the, the the blessings of earth. You know, the, the creatures in the sea, uh, how they live, and um, offsetting the, the global balance of, of all elements. You know, in, in Native America, uh, referring to Navajo, there's there's four elements. There's earth, water, fire, and air. Each one of these is, is being misused um, to mankind's um, greed. And we're not... Uh, being, we're not being open enough to, to try to fix the problems that we create ourselves. We're taking these things for granted, you know, just uh, just because we've been here only a fraction of the Earth's time, uh, we think we know everything, uh, but nature has been here much longer. And I think nature is teaching us a very important lesson that uh, we need to, to care for our bodies and, and treat the Earth as a body itself. And, and care for it to help replenish uh, things that have been lost. They have to keep things in balance. Um, and I would, I would have to say, if I was put in charge of the world today, I would do my best to, um, you hear this a lot, but annihilate, uh, get rid of a lot of the greed, try to, to be an, an ambassador of goodwill, and um, to teach that, that life is a gift, that we all, um, have possession of just for a short time. If, if I were put in charge of the world, um, I would do my best to bring the positiveness out of everyone, the people, because we are just tools that the earth needs to survive. And without us, the earth, um, I think, would be a lot healthier. <laughs> but. Um, we, we're, we're just an organism, organism that, that's been here itself. And uh, we, we've been blessed by uh, the ability to, to think and learn. And the life force that was here before us um, is still in existence today. And I believe this life force is, is living with us uh, in real time. And every now and then it will make a connection to special people that possess uh, uh, almost a uh, reincarnated spirit, I, I could say, um, a special knowledge, almost like a conduit of energy that, that this existence filters through. And they're the ones who um, absorb the energy and learn, know, have the knowledge to make this world a better place. And, and that's, that's all pretty much I have to say. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Now, the day, uh, September the 21st, which was just one week prior to uh, John Mack's accident, I put the same question to the people that uh, organized the International Day of Peace. And I had lots of emails, so I'm only going to share one with you. And that comes from Sue in Indiana. Uh, very close to the Illinois border, she says, and she says, I would have to say the first thing that came into my mind that was not wanting to be in charge of the world, so actually I wouldn't take the job. The problem is the question is really putting you in, putting you in charge. I want to find a way to make everyone come together and share everything and have no one in need of anything. However, I don't know with the mindset of the world how to do that very thing without force that leads to wars and conquering, which would make the coming together improbable. I have to ask everyone to come together and find a common cause to make that happen without violence or force. And so I think um, uh, in some of our opinions, the greatest professor of psychiatry next to Sigmund Freud in this um, century would be very proud of how the people view um, things like that and how they are using their mind um, because he was really a great person to wanted you to use your mind. He wasn't afraid to go out on the limb. 
um, he was really controversial in many at many times because people couldn't didn't quite know what to do with him, and so <coughs> excuse me, we got ash for months in Helens. And so to see the young and the old and people from all races, all creeds, native people, educated, um, it, it was just great to have sat on this footage so long and use it as a memorial to Dr. Mack. I'm going to go back to uh, give you a little background on him that we didn't get to, and uh, I'll just talk until we run out of time here. The music in the closing today, uh, it was written and performed by Zoli. And that came of one of the shows, um, and it, it's uh, very appropriate for what, from what we needed. So I'm going to read you a couple of more things here um, in reference to John Mack. He addressed his issues of worldview to the individual level that in his early clinical explorations of dreams, nightmares, and teen suicide, in his biographical study of the life of the British officer T. E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, for, for which he received the Pulitzer Prize in 1977. Now, I've had this movie forever, and I never watched it, but I was told by some of the friends that one of the things he did was um, really go into that and try to bring it into the now and how the action of this officer sort of can be applied to modern day times and how this one man wanted to put people together. And I'm just repeating what I heard because I haven't had time to watch Rons of Arabia. So that might be really cool for us to, um, cool wasn't really a good word here, but maybe we can revive that old movie and see what he was talking about. Um, his interest in the spiritual aspect of human experience has been compared by the New York Times to that of fellow Harvard alumni William James. And like James, Mack became a controversial figure for his efforts to bridge spirituality and psychiatry. He later brought, uh, broadened into the general consideration of the merits for an expanded notion of reality, for which allows one that which allows for experiences that may not fit the Western uh, materialist paradigm, yet deeply affects people's life. And that kind of explains why I picked that song for the ending. And then his second and final book uh, on, was on, alien, on the alien encounter experience, and I think we showed that here for a minute. It was the Passport of the Cosmos, Human Transformation and Alien Encounters, he wrote in 1999 that was much of the accumulating of his work with experiences of alien encounters. And I'm not sure, but I believe him and Bud Hopkins did a lot of work with um, Barney and Betty Hill. If you remember, they were the people that, um, uh, that brought the alien abduction to the forefront. And then uh, and then he, his life was also documented in a film called Touched by Emmy-nominated filmmaker Laurel Chitton. Now, considering that I am so blind, I think I'm doing a really good job, so bear with me on my reading here. Um, let's see, whatever we have here. It's the wrong page. But all in all, it was just a, a pleasure having to heard him speak. And they, if you go to my webpage, uh, some of his talks are probably going to be listed there where <laughs> you can probably order uh, s some of them. I'm sure there will be links um, uh, e eventually. And if that doesn't work for you, go to, um, I see I mentioned it a while ago, to this website that sort of talks about his life in depth. And uh, it was www.centerchange.org. That's easy, centerchange.org. Then the other interesting thing we ran into, if you remember, each year we give the Human of the Year Award. Jim McDermott got the Human of the Year Award two years ago. Dennis Kucinich got the Human of the Year Award this year. And just by some odd coincidence, they have all crossed paths because when 
the paradigm shift um, group that it turns out that Dr. Mack partially financed and, um, uh, and, and worked with, they sent open letters to everybody in Washington, D.C. during the X conference. And so it turns out that they actually all know each other. And I thought that was just such a coincidence for us to have picked people that we didn't even know that were aware of each other. So either way, I'm sure he's going to be greatly missed. And I want to tell the abduct abductees and the contactees uh, just to come forward and don't feel by yourself. And, um, and there are pe people out there that, that actually um, is going to be able to work with you and uh, make sense of all the wonderful things that's ahead of us. And in the predictions, we said that probably in 2005, it would finally open up and some things are coming forward. And like some people believe, um, some of the Space Brothers are probably already here and we just haven't recognized them. And so from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank John Mack for his life work and having shared time and space with us for as long as he did. And, and hopefully um, read a lot of wonderful minds and, and continue his work in, in the place where he was designated to go. And um, it'll just be interesting to see how that continues. Then I got one more email here that maybe I have time for. And that was on being in charge of the world. This is from a person in, oh, where was it? Somewhere in India. And I don't know if it's a him or her, but it says, I've been thinking about starting community groups to discuss issues in society on such topics. The primary interest is in planting the seed. That is, starting the groups, letting the people there know the ground rules, and moving on to the next community or town and doing the same things as before, and then go on to the next town, et cetera, et cetera. This, I think, is a very easy way to start people cooperating and informing themselves and others about the issues we face today, topics such as politics, community services, resources, transportation, etc., could be talked about. But the important thing is this. The talking is only there to start affirmative action. There is no point in just talking about talking and debating things. People must act. So talking and the, and the discussion has just now started. I think this could be a safe way of getting people involved in the movement towards world peace this way, no one has to be in charge of the world. I thought that was interesting. And uh, so thank you for all the friends that participated in this memorial that we did. And um, yeah, and, and just thank you. I don't know how far we are to the end. I think I ran out of things to say because it's a little emotional here. And uh, just thank you to all the friends that came forward and um, and helped us with this. And some of us are looking for computers because we crashed. So if you have extra computers laying around, um, we appreciate it. I don't think any of, us, any of us know how to operate Macs. And so um, somebody had offered a Mac computer. But I'm, as you can see, I'm struggling with what I had. And, um, and so that's it. And I did wear my UFO shirt in honor of the show. That's the. Um, that's the UFO picture that I took from um, an airplane when it was just about to hit us. And um, so I thought that would be appropriate too. And uh, just keep the letters coming and, and do the work. And uh, well, that's all I got to say. I'm out of things to say. So I, I know I have time left, but I just can't tell you anything else for today. So maybe we want to go to the closing and just cut it a little short because I really can't add anything to this. Bye. No, no, no. It needs to go to the clip. <laughs>